Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Cinemachine's impulse source so that you can shake your screen when you collide with objects and you can also shake your screen for certain events. And this is all built in to Cinemachine. All right, so let's start. So the first thing you want to have is Cinemachine installed. So go to Window, Package Manager, and be sure to select Unity Registry to show all the packages. And then you want to make sure to scroll down and find Cinemachine, or you can type it in in the search bar up here and just install that right here, down here it says install, just click it and it will install that package. And then we can add a Cinemachine camera to follow our player, and so you can do that by going to the top where it says Cinemachine, and then there's a bunch of different kinds of cameras that you can use. In this case we'd want to go for the create a 2D camera since this is a 2D game, and in a previous video, which I'll link down below, I explain more of the Cinemachine parameters that you can find when you add in a Cinemachine virtual camera to your scene. So if you're interested in checking that out, it'll be in the description. So for your camera, the main thing that you want to specify is your follow. So you want to follow your player. So you can just drag in your player from your hierarchy into that follow parameter, and it will automatically center it so that your player is in this yellow square. And then there's a bunch of settings that you can specify here. I'll just fill them out and show you them. All right, so here are some of the values that I've picked. You can preview this by going to your game tab in window general game. And then you can be sure to press Game Window Guides, and that'll show you the preview of how your camera is going to be centered. And so here are the settings that I chose. The main thing is that I increased the X and Y damping. I added a little bit of look ahead time, so it looks ahead to where it thinks the player is moving. And then I changed the camera distance, so it'll be a little further away from the player. And then there's some soft zones here. If you want more details on this, you can check my previous video. So you can see how this looks like when you press play, it follows it pretty smoothly, and you can play around with these values. So the main thing that we want to do in this case is that when we crash into this player, we want it to shake the screen, and this can be used for any kind of game. It doesn't have to be 2D, it can also be 3D. You can easily adapt it for 3D. So let's start by adding the collision shake. So in the Cinemachine virtual camera, if you scroll down, you can see there's an extension and you can click that extension and a bunch of stuff will pop up. There are extensions for the Cinemachine, like a confiner, which confines the spaces which it can move on. But in this case, we want to add in a impulse listener. And so an impulse listener basically listens for impulses from the scene. And if it detects an impulse, then it will tell Cinemachine to go crazy and shake, depending on how you told it to shake. So there's some options here. First of all, there's a channel mask. So this is kind of like layers for Cinemachine. So you can have several layers for different impulses. So if you want an impulse impacting one layer and not the other, you can specify that. But in this case, we just want the default and you can specify it by going to the edit on the side and it will tell you to make a new Cinemachine impulse asset and you can just save that. And when you click it and expand it in the inspector, you can see that you have a size and you can just increase that size to maybe three and then you can name the channels that you want or layers. But I'm just going to delete that since we don't need that for this video. Next up is the gain, which is the strength of the impulse signal. By the way, you can hover over these to see their tooltips and they explain what they do. So it's from zero to one. In this case, one is the normal strength. And if you put it to zero, it completely mutes the signal so it won't shake at all. And then in this case, we do want to check use 2D distance since we are a 2D game. And it basically ignores the Z axis for calculations, which we don't need. So once you've added the listener, we actually need a source for the impulse. Because even if you have a listener, if you don't have anything that it needs to listen to, then it's basically just sitting around. So I've made up a little enemy here, but it's not really an enemy. He's just a, a guy walking about, but we'll just say he's an enemy. And so there's a couple things I've added to him. It's the sprite render, of course, an animator so he can move up and down and change the sprite. I've also added in a box collider, so this is very important. So in this case, we're going to be adding impulse on collision. So for collision, we need to make sure that our player has a collider. So we can click on our player and we can just add in a box collider 2D. So we got to make sure that our player has a collider. And then we have to make sure that the thing we're colliding with has a collider. So I added in a box collider 2D for this enemy as well. And you can select is trigger or not. In this case, it will work for both. Is trigger, if you have it checked, your player will go through the object. But if you don't have it checked, then the player will collide with the object and the object will be like kind of a wall stopping the player from continuing. So I'm going to deselect it since generally you don't move on top of people in real life. And then one thing that you need to add is a rigid body 2D so it can detect the collision. So in this case, I've added it to the enemy 
And there's a couple things that I changed here. The first one is that I froze its rotation on the z-axis. Since we're in 2D, we don't want it to be rotating on the z-axis, because that's for 3D rotations. And you notice that for 2D, Unity generally has gravity pointing down. So if you left it like that, it would just fall down because it's a 2D game and it thinks that gravity is pointing down. So we can actually change that in the settings for a top-down game. And so we can just go to Edit Project Settings and under Physics 2D, just make sure to set the Y to zero. By default, it has Y as one, meaning the gravity is in the Y axis. Um, but in this case, we don't want any gravity affecting our player, so we can just set that to zero. And so once you have the rigid body and the box collider, we can add in an impulse source. So we can add component and search for a Sin Machine impulse source. There's two of them. So we have the collision impulse source and the impulse source. In this case, we want the collision impulse source. Since this will be on collision and it handles it for you automatically, you don't have to code anything, which is amazing. And then there's a couple of settings here that we can mess around with in order to change how it shakes the screen. So the first thing that you may notice is the impulse channel, which as I mentioned before is the layer in which the impulse is happening on and you can change that around depending on how you like. And then one big important setting here is the raw signal. So this is how we want our signal to move around or kind of like the noise of the screen shape. And to make one of these, we can just do it in our project folder. So we can make a new folder called Cinemachine Noise, or you can make it whatever you want. And then there we can make a new Cinemachine Noise. So you right click, create, and then under Cinemachine, there's two settings that we can change. There's the noise settings and there's the fixed signal definition. Let's do noise settings. And once you click it, you can see in the inspector, you have some parameters here. For the noise settings, it's more if you want to have waves. So in this case, we have the position noise, which is how we want the screen shake to change in position. And then we can also do rotation noise, which is how we want the screen to rotate during the shake. In this case, let's just do position since we're in 2D mode, um, we don't really want any rotation, but you can just specify it and it will be the same process. So let me show you how to do the position noise. So we can expand the positions like so. In this case, we don't want position Z since we don't really want to move it in the Z axis, but of course you can. So we can expand position X and position Y and you can see that we have components here and you can add to a list. And so once you add to a list, you have two parameters here. We have a frequency and an amplitude. A frequency is the speed of the wave and the amplitude is how high that wave goes. So let's put the amplitude to one and you can see we have a straight line here. And then let's put our frequency to five. And you can see this isn't actually linear and it's because there's a checkbox at the end of this and it says non-random wave if checked. So if we leave this unchecked, it adds some randomness to the wave, which you might like for certain parameters. But in this case, to show you how it works, I'm gonna check it and now it will remove the randomness that it adds to it. Since we have a frequency of five, it happens much more often. If we decrease the frequency, it decreases the speed of the wave. The amplitude is the noise of the channel. You can see in the tooltip here, it says larger numbers vibrate higher. So this is kind of like the strength of the vibration and you can play around with those values. And what's cool is that you can add multiple components to a position. So you can add the plus sign here and you can add in another wave. So let's say we want our frequency for this one to be a little bit higher. So let's say we want a seven and we want the amplitude to be 0.3. So this actually adds on to this frequency and amplitude. It basically combines them together and you can select it to be not random, but in this case, let's add a bit of randomness. Up here, you can see that we have a preview time and a preview height. So we can actually press animated to see a sample of how this screen shake would look like. And then we can change the preview height, which changes the height of the preview. And we can change the preview time, which of course, the more time you add, the slower it will look because it's a much larger time frame. And this is just for preview, it doesn't actually impact the screen shake. So let me uncheck this. So to add a bit of randomness, and let's add in our position dot Y. So let me show you what Unity says in their documentation. They say impulse assumes that the main direction for an impact is down. So as a general rule, your signals should put more vibration along the Y axis. So generally they recommend adding more impulse to the Y axis than to the X. And so you can copy these values if you want. And the same goes with position Z, rotation X and rotation Y. It's the same process and this is really simple to do. Then there's another kind of signal you can do by right clicking, create, 
Cinemachine fixed signal definition. And so this is with actual curves instead of noise. So you can click on the box here and it'll come up with a curve. So they have some preset curves that you can pick. And this defines how you want the shape to behave over time. In this case, we want it to start off really strongly. Then we want it to linearly decrease down to zero. You can also make your own curve by clicking this gear icon and pressing new and you can name it noise. And you can actually move around the points that you want to wherever you want it. To add points, you can double click on the line to add a point. And then there's going to be two points connected to that line, which defines the slope near those points. And you can right click and delete key as well. And you can do this for the Y curve. I'm just going to select one and for the Z curve. In this case, we don't really need a Z curve. All right, so once you've defined your noise, we can go back into our enemy. So we can just drag in our noise settings or your fixed signal. And so let me explain some of the settings here that are in the impulse source. So the amplitude gains defines the strength of the signal. So it starts at zero, zero meaning it has no strength. One is the default value. And if you put it greater to one, that means a stronger value. So instead of changing the noise settings here, you can adjust the overall amplitude and frequency for your raw signal. So the randomize checkbox down below randomizes the raw signal start time. So it can have a little bit of variability when you start the screen shake. Time envelope controls the duration of the impulse and the intensity of it. So there's two main properties here. One is attack and the other one is decay. So attack is the lead up to the screen shake and the decay is the end of the screen shake. After the, the height has been reached, it decays off. So you know how when a music is playing, it doesn't generally start off really strongly. It starts off slowly and builds up to the top. And then once it reaches the top and the music is ending, it kind of soothes away slowly. And so for that, you can use a curve and they have several curves defined here. So we can use this one. Generally, you want it to point upwards because we want it to start off lowly and then increase over time. And for the decay, we can do the opposite. We can specify one going downwards with a slope. The sustain time is the time where it maintains the full amplitude after the attack. So this is the highest point of impact. Here you tell it how long you want that to last. And so they have a scale with impact checkbox right here. And this means the stronger the impact is, the longer it will last. So you can check that there. Then we have a spatial range section. This area is mostly to do with the location of the impact and how you want it to affect a larger radius. So for example, here we have the radius of the impact. Currently it's 100, which is very large. And then we can do a direction. So in this case, it's fixed. So there will be no rotation when there's an impact. But if you put rotate towards source, it will rotate towards where the impact came from. So this is much better for 3D games. Say you have an enemy or bullet coming from the right and it hits you on your right side. Then the screen shake will kind of rotate a little bit to the right to indicate to the player that, hey, someone's shooting you from the right. Maybe you want to look over there and do something. Dissipation mode is what happens when the impulse reaches outside of the impact radius. You can do an exponential decay, soft decay, or a linear decay. The dissipation distance is, well, the distance that this kind of goes into effect. If you put linearly, for example, then it will decrease linearly over 1000 distance. And finally, the propagation speed specifies the meters per second, the speed at which the impulse propagates through space. So right now it has a 343 meters per second speed, which is very fast, which means that the higher the speed is, it will allow listeners to react more instantaneously. While if you put it lower, it will take listeners a little bit longer to react. And by listeners, I mean the Cinemachine Impulse listener attached. And then we have a trigger object filter. So this is really important. So this is what we want to listen to in what layer mask and with what tags. So in this case, we want our layer mask to be player and we can just remove the default because we want it to detect collisions with the player. And you want to select your player and up here under layer, you want to be sure to select player. If you do not have a player layer, it's because you have to add the layer. And I just added in a player layer into number eight. So make sure your player has that layer and then the enemy has the layer mask. And you can also choose which tags you want to ignore. Lastly, we have how to generate the impulse. So you can use the impulse direction. So depending on the direction of the impact, the impulse will be impacted. Um, you can scale impact with mass, which they take this from the rigid body, and you can scale impact with speed. So how fast the objects are colliding. In this case, I'm not going to select any of those. 
So right off the bat, if you press play and test it out, then we have this intense shaking screen whenever we collide with the player. And this is all out of the box, no coding whatsoever, which was pretty amazing. And you can just go into the enemy and actually decrease the amplitude to like 0.2 and we can decrease the frequency to maybe 0.4. And see now the effect is much less. And then finally, what if you want to do an impulse signal, but you don't want to actually do it on collision. Maybe you want to do it when a certain event happens. Well, that's really easy. So I'm just going to right click and create an empty object to show you how it would work. I'm just going to call this shake. And so I've already made a script for this called shockwave unity event, which I can show you it right now. So as you can see, I just have a public unity event. You can work with events. And then I have a simple invoke repeating. So after three seconds, we will execute this function right here. And this function will execute after that every Every four seconds. So after every four seconds, we want to invoke our Unity event. So now we have an event, and then we can add in a new component, and we can add in a normal Cinemachine impulse source, which is the same settings as the other one, except in this case, it's not collision, it's just a normal impulse that we have to manually tell it to shake. So I can just add in my noise here. I'm just going to decrease the amplitude and frequency once again. And right here, you can see that in our Unity event, we can add in a new event, and we can just drag in the script here. And then under no function, we can say Cinemachine impulse source, and then we can generate the impulse. But this is a great example. If you had these in separate scripts, you can just drag in the script here and call it through a Unity event. If you don't want to call it through a Unity event and you want to call it manually, you can also just have a script for that as well. So I have a script called Shockwave Listener. I just say using Cinemachine, and then I have a reference to the Cinemachine impulse source. In the awake function, I get the component attached to this game object, the Cinemachine impulse source, and then I do the same thing as the other one. I do an invoke repeating on this function. And then I call source.generateImpulse. There's a couple other overloads for this function. You can see that we have three overloads. So we have one that takes in a vector three velocity. So this is the velocity of the impulse. If you collide with something, you can give it the direction it collides with and move it in that direction. Then we can add in a float force. And finally, we can just add in nothing and it will just use the pre-existing settings that it has to generate that impulse. So this is if you want to call it from the script directly. So let's use the Unity event one, and when we click play, you will see that it starts to shake every four seconds. So this is great if maybe you have an earthquake, or maybe something's happening in the scene, maybe there's a big boss that's stepping down. Every time the boss walks, you want the screen to shake, and you can send an event to the impulse source. That impulse source will get that event, and it will propagate that event over to the impulse listener. And then Cinemachine will be like, okay, I have this information about the source. I have how much I want the screen to shake. So then I will shake the screen right now. So that's kind of how it works. So yeah, that's how to do a shake screen. You don't really need any coding whatsoever, but if you do want to do events and stuff, you can just easily call the impulse source with one line. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching and thanks to all my patrons. If you're interested, the link is in the description. Additionally, I have a Discord channel where you can ask for help or you can just chat. So thanks so much for watching and see you next time.